thanks for tuning in. It's been about two years since our kitchen renovation and today I want to talk about how our butcher block countertops have held up. Okay, so I'm holding the camera now and I just opened the blinds. It's really bright with the afternoon light. Um, so there are some bright spots. Our perimeter cat owner tops are the butcher block as I was talking about and then we have our island here in a marble. So let's just go over everything quickly. And again, I did not clean anything. This is exactly what our countertops look like on a day-to-day -day basis. We have messes just like everyone else, except for the island, which I like to keep completely empty. So this is our meal kit recipes I put here, our fruits, and then kind of like, um, I guess the kids' toys. This is like our junk bowl of miscellaneous little things and tomatoes. So let me move all this. What I noticed and what I didn't do and should have done is I should have put just some clear silicone so you can see just right here, um, you know, there's a little gap so dust could get in there, but otherwise um, it's okay. And then same thing, normally no matter what kind of backsplash you have and countertop, you do want to put a silicone in the corner because any grout that you have will crack, which is what we have here, um, just for the movement. So that's like a totally normal thing with any kind of grout and different surfaces. So it's same thing in your shower, you want to put silicone. Um, I did not. Uh, so that's something definitely I can... So speaking specifically of the butcher block counters, I know in this one here, when I was installing my tile, I didn't have um, proper like surface. I put only just one layer of cardboard and I know that I did like cut up, try and focus. There we go. Just got some little cut lines. Then this is literally as soon as I did it, you know, within that week probably, and you can see them if you go really closely. And then same thing, I mean, if you used your surface as cutting, which we do not. I don't cut anything directly on our countertops, we just use cutting boards. Um, one thing I wanna to mention too, here we did pocket holes underneath to hold the two slabs together. It has held up perfectly. There is a bit of a gap here from where my, um, I put wood filler here, kind of like, shrunk over time so I can always fill that in again if I want to. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that when I did the wood filler I kind of went here so you can see that the stain in this corner in particular just took it a little bit differently and that's been like that since the starting. This is my bad so if you're doing that I would watch out for how you put your wood filler on if you're doing something similar. And then some of the places underneath you can kind of see like this lighter line that was because I did a clear coat on the bottom first which is what the countertop said to do that you should seal all sides so I assume that meant the bottom as well but then there is this one part where the stain didn't take so that's something to keep in mind as well um, let's go over here into the sunny zone let me try and focus this is where we would get the most water obviously around our sink. I wanted to put the sink as far back as possible. I didn't want any gaps. We did have a gap. I probably shouldn't have because we had to cut into the Ikea cabinet. My bad. I'll learn that for the future. Um, but what I did, I did put clear silicone kind of back here and then kind of I like just smeared it so that if water, any water did get in the back here it would go on the silicone and not on the wood. Again, you can see some like grout kind of stuff there. And then some of the silicone around our sink, which I mean, can be removed and touched up again. It's been two years. I did it right when we installed it and nothing since. I do want to point out a couple of small little spots and gaps. There's one here and then kind of hard to see in the different sun. There is just a bit of fading here of my clear coat because this kind of gets more water. So just a bit of the fading. Let me try and share that. And then I'll close the blinds to see if that makes it any better. Yeah, so you can see just a little bit in this area here. 
So I'll keep the blinds closed and then go here, the silicone, same thing on this side. And I did want to point out a couple of spots over here. So here is one of them. And then here's some gouges, which I think were on our countertop before, we just didn't notice and then until it was too late and it was installed. But here, let me zoom in really close. Okay, so I just sort of focused in. It's kind of like a little divot zone. Um, I find that maybe it was like a bead of water that didn't get wiped up or just some sort of imperfection on the underneath of the counter and then eventually it kind of bubbles up and then it makes kind of like a, a hole. Um, there's another one over here, right here. which you can see, this is just, this is definitely things that have appeared that would happen because it's wood and near water. So it's very minimal, but you can see here, it's kind of like a softer area that I think, I don't know if there was one little water spot there that just stayed on there forever. I always try and wipe up water if we ever are using the sink, normally too. Um, when we wash dishes and we put anything to dry, I'll just get it out into my drawer here. We use this and we put it here. And then once the dishes dry, I leave them kind of drip dry overnight mostly. And then I put them back. So I don't know if that's these water spots. You can see it kind of here in the sunlight happen from that or from, you know, something else. Or if those were just imperfections that are kind of working their way over time. And one last thing I wanted to mention for our countertops is that this side where we cut, you can see here how it's like darker. It's from the saw, like the saw kind of burned this little gap here. And I think it did it on the same side over there. Um, or we had chosen this at the top. Basically, we could have, I guess, sanded it to get rid of that burn mark. If you've ever cut something with a saw and you leave your saw on the too long, this is what happens. Um, you might be used to that <laughs> with sawing, but I mean, obviously we could have sanded it or changed it, but we didn't have too, too much of a gap to work with. So it is kind of that darker burnt area there. But I don't know if people notice too much. Now I'm showing you because I'm zooming in. That's pretty much it for the counters. Would I do butcher block again? Yes, 100%. Uh, like I mentioned over there, there's just this lighter little band here and that's because I did the clear coat on the bottom. Maybe I would do, I think a full clear coat instead of doing a stain or do a darker stain or maybe stain the bottom, then clear coat it. But I was kind of working in a time rush because it said you had to do it really quick. I don't know how accurate that is, but I did try and follow all the instructions. And you can kind of see this spot here a bit more. So that's it for our butcher block counters. Again, we do not cut directly on them. There aren't any cut marks or anything other than um, I know over there and that was me with the X-Acto. But another thing you can do is you can oil your counters or you can, um, which I think you can see kind of this spots here. I'm gonna do that quickly. Um, you can also do the clear coat again. The polycrylic is what I did. And then if you do more coats of that, it's kind of different surface. So however you want to seal, there are different options. But I'm going to try oiling to see if it gets rid of these. Now, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so I have this area here, which I guess is kind of maybe more of our prep zone, but also has all those scratches that I mentioned um, from when I was doing my backsplash. I have this booze block booze block mystery oil um, and this is good for any wood surface I actually bought it years and years ago because we have one wood cutting board and I think like other wood things spoons and stuff um, but it might last you your entire life like you're not gonna use a lot of it I oil my stuff maybe a couple times a year minimum um, so yeah we're gonna test this out and see what happens it does say to apply it every three to four weeks, but on our counters, we have done nothing in the last two years. And then for my cutting boards and stuff, I just do it as it needs it. So this will really like just kind of liven up the area. And as I mentioned, I did do a polycrylic. So I could do the polycrylic again, just to clear coat it and to really protect the surface. 
so I might do that but I'm just gonna see how this looks like if it's gonna change how it looks visually I mean it already looks a lot oiled and better but we'll leave that on for a few minutes and then wipe it up again Thanks for watching! Make sure to check out the original Butcher Block Counter install video to see all of the details for that that I mentioned in the video. And follow the rest of the kitchen renovation series if you didn't see those videos yet. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube too to get more videos as they come out. Thanks!